this edition of Airwaves, Firepower for Fire Scout. The Navy arms the MQ-8B Fire Scout for the first time. Plus, local leaders team up to help veterans find work. And the power of positive attitude. How this former red tail soared past prejudice to complete the mission. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Prue. And I'm Command Master Chief Mark Cummings. Thanks for joining us. A demonstration at NAS Patuxent River explores communications technology of the future. The Surface Aviation Interoperability Lab showed how new and existing technologies can work together during a visit, board, search, and seizure mission. Using a common data link and handheld device, U.S. Navy and Coast Guard boarding teams will be able to transmit biometric data back to the host ship real time. They'll find their target interest, person of interest, take that data from their fingerprint, plug that into the same CDL that they used for watching the video as they were approaching the boat and transmit that data back to the ship. And from the ship, the data comes out of the CDL on the ship into what we call a cross-match database. So they were able to take that data, transmit it back, and pull that data back and get the return on the fingerprint within minutes. As part of the last tactical mile demonstration, industry partners showed how 4G cell phone technology could be used to benefit the military in the future. Working together in support of the warfighter, NOC AD's Industry Day and Technology Showcase encourages cooperation between government and industry teams. The event highlighted emerging NOC AD technology and presented future contracting opportunities for industry partners. We wanted to allow industry an opportunity to engage with our scientists and engineers in some of our unique labs and facilities and partner, really, that showcase is about partnering with industry and allowing industry to leverage those labs and facilities to better their products. It's very important for, for NOC AD to talk to industry because we have a lot of very bright scientists and engineers that develop some great solutions that never make it into the field. So this is an opportunity for us to come talk to industry about all these great solutions that we've developed and find an industry partners that can help transition the, that technology. It's really all about transition. This was the first time Industry Day included a technology showcase. An unmanned Navy helicopter will carry weapons for the first time. Test teams at Webster are outfitting the MQ-8B Fire Scout with a laser-guided rocket. A weapons capability will allow the unmanned aircraft to engage hostile threats without support from carrier or shore-based aircraft. Initial fit checks are designed to evaluate Fire Scouts in flight frequencies to see how these vibrations may impact onboard weapons. What we're trying to see is when the helicopter's flying, it doesn't cause that launcher to vibrate uh, very high amplitude such as it's going to cause damage to either itself or to the aircraft or to the, in this case, the missiles that are inside the launcher. They're very sensitive to. It is the, the very first weaponization program on this aircraft. Um, it was identified as an urgent need for the, for the Navy, so we're pressing forward as fast as we can to get it out there. The Fire Scout test team has 18 months to complete the weaponization program. You can read more about the initial test phase on the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil. Local business owners, government officials, and military personnel have joined together to help veterans find work. Leadership Maryland hosted a symposium to discuss job opportunities for wounded warriors and military members transitioning into the civilian workforce. The hope is to encourage business owners to hire veterans and give veterans the tools necessary to find a job. Veterans want to go to work. They're ready to go to work. If work is available and they meet those needs, then it's a perfect combination. Uh, and so encouraging them to do so and having the companies come out and reach out to them is very important in, in making that process happen. Across the board, it's about hiring veterans and the skill sets they bring and the importance to what we have. It is a uh, it is a small effort that all of us need to collectively do. And this type of event is networking that brings so many uh, people together that can make a difference in helping us. Leadership Maryland will host five more symposiums this year. Encouraging young women to expand their horizons. More than 140 middle school girls visited China Lake for a day full of math, science, engineering, and technology workshops. The Expand Your Horizon conference aims at encouraging young women to seek STEM careers. NOCWD scientists and engineers showed students how learning in the classroom applies to jobs in the real world. And it was just an amazing event uh, for those young girls. Uh, not only did they focus on the science and the technology side, 
but they also had an NCIS special agent come and talk to the girls. They had a veterinarian. Uh, they had a lot of things that were related to the science, math, engineering, and technology, uh, but not directly. And so uh, the girls just, they were, they were amazing. They had a great time, and the energy level in that building uh, was just something, something to behold. This is the 11th year for the NOC WD Expand Your Horizons Conference. A living legend shares an important message on the power of diversity. Retired Colonel Charles McGee spoke to a crowd at NES Patuxent River about his experience as a Tuskegee Airman. As one of the first African Americans to fly for the U.S. military, McGee faced challenges on and off the battlefield. He encouraged listeners to forego prejudice and focus on the mission. We're a very diverse country and what our experience proves that talent doesn't come, as I say, with happenstance or birth or color of skin. And we need all of our young people to develop their talents to the peak because they're the future and we lose our freedoms if we don't preserve them with talented young people taking their rightful place in the future. Many young people need to understand how they got where they are, what's behind it. They can go and read in history books, but I think they listen when, when someone is here to actually uh, talk to them in person. It really struck me when you listen to him and what he's been through um, he, he got a, a couple life lessons that will tell you the value of, of not being uh, put off by sometimes when things are hard. Sometimes you're going you're gonna to have bumps in the road, you're going to have challenges, and not let adversity take you away from your goal. Don't ever let that happen. Colonel McGee served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, and he holds the record for the highest three-war total of fighter combat missions of any pilot in U.S. Air Force history. If you would like to learn more about the Tuskegee Airmen and Colonel McGee's visit to Patuxent River, visit the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil. And that's it for this edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight line.